I did quite a bit of murder. All right. This is the evening's first awkward silence. Moving on. Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from Number One Projects, Hobar from Behind the Mistakes, and me, KJ, from Crude But Efficient. Episode 25. Woohoo! Milestone! <laughs> <laughs> hello. I did. I didn't realize you hit record. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, uh, hello. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that either. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> so, how you been? What you went up to, Glenn? Uh, I've been busy in the workshop, mm. not just for my own projects, but Michelle's been in there as well, playing this week. Mm, nice. She's um, she's off to Rubio Monaco on Friday to the mm. ladies' event and. Um, They've, they've said that you can bring along projects, some finished projects to uh, use some of their products on. So she's uh, she's been making a few things. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to send your force ring with her. I did, I did, it has been suggested. <laughs> I have an unfinished project here. It's uh, Meet Glenn. <laughs> I've been working on him for years and I, I kind of feel I'm I'm stuck. <laughs> I mean, there is progress, but it doesn't seem to <laughs> have an end goal. I think he's going finish, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> I think things are going backwards with him now. <laughs> so the bullying starts early this week. I see. <laughs> when you give an opening like that, I mean, <laughs> can't really be blamed. <laughs> yeah, I've been um, working on the four string as well. And um, yeah, that's nearly done now. I've been putting frets in this evening. Oh. <laughs> You're right there, Havard. <laughs> Brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> he seems to be enjoying himself, at least. Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, You're just playing with your four string there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I heard you say <laughs> what uh, KJ heard you say last week. <laughs> uh, it puts yeah. everything in a completely different context, but move along, move along. <laughs> God, have what have you been up to? <laughs> I just seem to be causing trouble. <laughs> uh, so sleep deprivation uh, leads to, uh, <laughs> well, a uh, different kind of humor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's, uh, I think the theme this week is uh, we're both tinkering with instruments. And, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's one step forward and... Uh, Two steps back. <laughs> Had a, I mean, uh, kind of early in the week, I got my uh, first uh, number one crude mistake. So uh, I spent uh, a half day uh, routing some parts on the CNC. <laughs> and then, uh, I was so pleased oh, yeah. and everything fit like a puzzle <laughs> and like, wait a minute. Hmm. Isn't the record? And then I just tested one of the recorders, and fuck, they are the hundred, hundred and eighty <laughs> degrees wrong. So just like, all right, go back, change the direction, and then press print again for another half day. So. I liked the uh, the comment that somebody put on your little short that you'd done for that. I said, why don't you just twist the head around, you dumbass? And then his next comment was, oh, that wouldn't make any difference, would it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the dumbass. Yeah. He actually, he managed to figure it out before I could comment on it, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, it doesn't work for the head, but for the rest yeah. of the recorder, it works. But, <laughs> but yeah, he went uh, hard with that comment, didn't he, to start that <laughs> with? That was brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of set up for it, but yeah. <laughs> and it looked really good, except for the part that they were the yeah. only way around. But the problem is... Um, while I was doing the second round, I was thinking, ooh, what if I did this in acrylic so the whole top plate was see-through because you'll have all the electronics and the mechanics oh, behind. Nice. Um, but then again, I think the 8 millimeter acrylic plates are kind of expensive and I need a big sheet. So might not go that route. I, I need to... <laughs> Yeah, that's for the next. I need version. to draw the line somewhere, and uh, I mean, God damn it, I got a touch screen and a computer now, which I was fiddling around with yesterday. So it's uh, it's become a massive project, and I, I need to finish it. <laughs> Would it need to be eight millimeter, Havard? Could you not go thinner? Because the thinner stuff that I use on the laser is pretty cheap. 
Yeah, but uh, ooh, then I need uh, a spacer plate around the edges because the the height. Well, I mean, I built the wind chest, and I used that height as a defining factor for the, the slot which it will fit into. So yeah. if I use thinner plates, I need to adjust everything else basically. So, I mean, it's doable, but. Mm. I would have to remake almost all the parts except the bottom plate, so I don't have to rewire anything. But uh, yeah, I think I'll uh, try to see if it actually comes together and <laughs> semi decently will uh, play a tune. And then yeah. hopefully I can just put it on the wall and say, that's that. Have you started uh, a list yet of stuff for the next version with stuff you can't put into this one? Oh, definitely. Um, I don't think I will do this before I've tested it, but I realize, of course, I also have now plans to put an, like a, a standard guitar amplifier in it. And then, of course, you need to adjust between those two. So I think as you get on a lot of guitar amplifiers, you get a pedal. So I want a pedal board with two pedals. Yeah. So I can actually adjust the volume on the guitar amplifier and then the other pedal adjust the the air pressure for the recorders. <laughs> yeah. um, and of course you need some stomp switches in between to like turn things off and on with your foot. But that is, that is for the 2.5. But of course, when I'm going to solder up all the electronics to the control panel, I need to have that in the back of my mind that I also need to have connection points so I can plug a pedal in and override a few functions. So, yeah. Yeah, pedal for the airflow. That's uh, that should be able to make some really funky things happen. <laughs> Very funky, and then of course some of the. I did originally try to do two octaves, and of course the second higher octave on the recorder is very sensitive to air pressure. So, I was thinking then if I can adjust that as you play with the pedal. Uh, that would help maybe but then again i mean it's a it's a vacuum cleaner blowing in a eight meter long <laughs> hose so there is there is a bit of a lag in the system there so i don't think the response of a pedal will be like a very moment when you start talking about adjusting the air pressure in my mind it's starting to sound like bagpipes now yeah um <laughs> it is rather close I still regret not buying that uh, small practice children's toy uh, bagpipe when we were at Scotland last year because <laughs> I have a lot of relays and actuators and so on. So I could actually, I don't need 25 bagpipes, but I, I can rig up one <laughs> with wilds to play. And then, of course, you have a bellow system and everything. So you just need a, a mechanical arm to like <laughs> squeeze it. So for yeah. so, but I've, I've seen some some people doing something similar. So uh, but it's, it's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And you managed to get a video out, video out as well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a. Uh... People have responded kind of well on this very short. I did another like one day video when it turned out okay in my mind. But, uh, so how many episodes are we? Is it going to be before it's fi finally finished? That's a good question. Um, I'm going to do that... electronic work, and I've tested the computer, so I need to download the software and make it happen. So. Then again, uh, getting the control panel and the amplifier in, and it's May, maybe, <laughs> or June. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I need to plan for the video as well. So it's, uh... It'll be done when it's done, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, which is never, I guess. The, times, <laughs> yeah. the time slot on the internet is infinite. So <laughs> I've done some fun projects in the past that I never wanted to end, so I... I kind of get it. I wouldn't rush it. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun. I, I've been watching um, Wintergatan for the last couple of years. And <clears throat> it started out like he built a, a prototype just to play one tune. And it almost fell apart as he played. And then, all right, he just, 
all right, I want to make a better one and take it on tour. And then you saw this shift uh, from a, a professional musician going like all out engineer and actually learning every step you need to actually engineer this thing with a precision that's way beyond what was ever needed. And then in the last video, he realized, well, I've engineered all the fun out of it. And that was the basic <laughs> thing I started with. It needs to be cool. It needs to be something you are so... Now he's going back to the roots. So he spent three years. Like, uh, <laughs> so maybe I'm on the same path. I, I don't know it yet. I'm just adding on and trying to make it perfect. And then realizing down the road that the first one was perfect as is. Yeah. Like I we all he's... are. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's more of a cautionary tale than a role model. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Tr I'm trying real hard to not fall into that <laughs> rabbit hole. I mean, <laughs> what have you been up to then, KJ? Uh, well, I've uh, I finished my uh, my latest project. Finished the video today uh, as of recording. That did feels you just good. Fin did you just finish the edit today? Yeah, I, I, I did a minor minor tweak at lunchtime. Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, more or less finished yesterday. But I uploaded it today, so, yes. so that's gone. And uh, on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> is this the battery one you want to next, or no? I'm you? still still waiting for the parts. No, this is a, a, another uh, table project. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can live uh, a bit of a table phase in your life, are you? Yeah, apparently it wasn't really meant to be that way. Um, but yeah, uh, it's our uh, kitchen table. It's, re it's, it's a really great table in a lot of aspects, except one. That it's got little, like, one centimeter times one centimeter edge. It's like a step down on the edge. Oh, okay. So when you try to scrape crumbs of the table, they all land on this little edge instead. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the worst kind of table design ever, but it, the rest of it is great. It's... It's extendable, it's wide, and the legs are not in the way. So it's oh, a really okay. great table, except yeah. for this thing. So how are you fixing it? I'm going to attempt to just uh, make some kind of uh, oak strips and glue them in place, which might be tricky, but who knows? And it might go to shit, go to shit but then, then we get a, a reason to get a new table. So. Fair enough. Is the yeah. table solid wood, or is it veneered? Or no, it's uh, most of it's veneered. I think the legs are solid, but the okay. uh, top is not. So you've not, not got much room for error in sanding then after you've added your oak strips. No, it's going to be the uh, <laughs> extreme light sanding and just <laughs> reapplying some kind of new coat. Who knows? It might go to. I, I mean, I might have to learn how to veneer. That yeah. could be a thing ooh, as well. Ooh, so I fun. mean. You can. I, I only. I tried to see the upside because my wife wants to get a new table, and I was up for that at first. But then we started looking for one, and I realized that we can't really find a table that's that's any better than the one we have, because all of the tables in the stores are. Yeah, there's something wrong with them. It feels like uh, nothing <laughs> fits me at least, uh, and making a, a whole kitchen it feels like a lot of work that i'm not really up for so i don't know <laughs> so so in destroying our the the table we have now that might be the the kick in the butt to actually make <laughs> make a new one or or come to terms with the ones who, who which are available on the market so when yeah when you talk about veneering for some reason because of your balls and chains and your pre your, your, your history before I keep thinking you might veneer in rubber or something weird like that. <laughs> well, I I like it to be easy to clean, but I don't think rubber <laughs> would. Yeah, you could jet wash it. <laughs> yes, yes, but oh, oh, have, having a table that feels like an old sex toy or something that would be <laughs> awful. Oh, I saw. Uh... We have a marketplace uh, place in Norway where people sell all kinds of stuff, and of course, I was searching for something, and then it suggests other ads 
for you. And then, of course, this um, it's a carpenter. He's doing custom pieces. <laughs> but the custom pieces was, uh, well, he's, uh, he's catering to a very specific market, to, uh, <laughs> to say that. And he said he was both uh, quick and discreet, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> <is. laughs> so, uh, well, we are, we are looking into a table as well. And I'm not getting one from that guy. Um, <laughs> but um, actually, stum- we need a round table uh, to have better usage of the living room space. And I want an oak table. Uh, of course, I could build one, but that would be just as expensive. And of course, uh, my wife indicated that it would take three years. So uh, yeah. we've been looking online. Um <laughs> And of course, they're crazy expensive, and we want the ones that are split that you can put like uh, a couple of extra sections in when you're having guests around. Uh, but now we actually stumbled over one in oak. Uh, of course, the um, the inlay sections are a veneered, uh, some other kind of wood, but uh, the basic round table and legs is solid oak, so that's good. Then okay. uh, you have something to sand on when the kids make chips and marks and draw on it. <laughs> and it was actually at a decent price, so we are actually thinking about just purchasing it. They, they say it's like a, a two-week lead time before they have it in shop, but you can reserve it already, so we were thinking about it. Oh, yeah. And of course, um, I realized that building one is not going to happen. I bought a, a plank of oak uh, on Saturday. Uh, for various uh, projects, but also to have the edges on the concrete table uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. building. And, yeah, that was expensive enough to uh, realize that, all right, I've now set myself off to actually having to build a, a decent table and legs as well as we discussed last week. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a... It's a table spring, it seems. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really fell down a, a rabbit hole of non-epoxy river tables after last week's episode thinking of what what because i mean i i really like live edge the look of live edges but as i said previously i i hate it when it's not a 90 degree on the on the edge of the table (laughs) so i don't want it there and i hate it the tables that have like a a ravine in the middle like we can drop stuff on the floor (laughs) tables are supposed to be closed in the middle so i don't want the live edge there either but if you epoxy it it would work but i really hate huge chunks of plastic so yeah i was looking Butter? around yeah that's not really <laughs> solid in uh, <laughs> perhaps in the winter time outside if it's cold but, enough yeah yeah but then the birds would eat it so no but <laughs> looking, look, looking around and it's, it's not really that much you can do I realized not that people have done. I mean, there are some uh, some concrete uh, river tables out there. Some were made a the river out of concrete. Some made, made a wood river instead, and some they just made a hole in in the middle of it and calling it a river. Uh, <laughs> but it's not that many. And I, I I think thought about it, and I can't really think of another way to make the concept of a river table without uh, epoxy or concrete is there any other liquidy thing that goes solid that you could use for a water for a table <laughs> i mean it's, uh, your, yeah, it's, uh, it's the yeah, original okay, river okay. yeah yes yeah yes <laughs> uh, we want it solid at room temperature sorry i i failed uh, to okay um uh, rolls out mercury <laughs> <laughs> i was going um, there yes. as well <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool as hell but not in the kitchen, I feel. <laughs> Ooh, lead. All right, you're yes. going to use it in a catch- kitchen. Uh, I mean, lead poisoning is... Yeah, uh, yeah. Once again, it could be no. I know that's been... Melting. For... I don't, he's not asking for anything original. No. I was thinking, what, what if you build a table and you put it in the middle of a river? And then you sit there and you have a <laughs> meal or something. This is a proper river table. I mean, that's a <laughs> idea for a YouTube video. Yeah, that. yeah, that's a pretty good one, actually. <laughs> Too bad I don't have a river. <laughs> we actually have one down here, but it's it's a bit overgrown, so it's it's a bit dark and gloomy for setting up. A, but yeah, maybe a, 
a candle lit dinner in the middle of the yeah, that's all right. I might have a plan for this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a summer project. <laughs> it's a dark and gloomy. It sounds like a Halloween project. Yeah. I mean, you've got a top Christine, so you might as well go with something spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right. Might might be Halloween before I get around to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, probably. Probably. No offense. I'm the same. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously not liquid KJ, but what about just cutting some metal sheeting to make the uh, river out of? Yeah. Yeah, something. You like metal work. You like woodwork. It seems like the perfect combination. Yeah. Yeah, some high voltage and some gaps. And if you <laughs> encase that in, yeah, you can make a sparkling river table. <laughs> you could do that thing if you get the if you get the metal stripped down the middle, then you can do that thing. You know where they connect two electrodes and get the the um, burning thing yeah. going through it off the metal strip. That'd be awesome. Yeah, just have two metal strips. Just to have the. <laughs> Live and, and neutral, and then just <laughs> plug stuff in just by putting them on the rails. You know, that, that, that is even worse than river tables. I, it's so ugly, I can't even describe it. And I would, <laughs> I would go as far as uh, copying KJ and say I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, when you're talking about hating stuff, um, when I'm building the table, of course, I need to join the corners of the table, uh, the oak strips. And of course, the, the go-to solution is miters, but I really hate miters. And of course, it doesn't help that my my miter saw, well, I, I dropped something on it last year and it, it flung a piece across the room. And after that, it hasn't been like a, a proper 45 after mm. that. But I mean, it's boring. It's the same when you're doing on like trim work on doors and everything and especially when you're using proper wood it always like it's always going to be a gap uh, unless yeah. you do some infill on the back or something or you fill it with some flexible gooey stuff so i thought well fuck it that's gonna be my thing i don't like miters i'm not gonna use miters i'm just gonna put it end to end and use a screw and then cover them up with some plugs that the contrast so it seems like uh, oh this was the plan all along heathen <laughs> <laughs> yeah you didn't want to go down the box joint route or the finger joint so you're just wow. gonna go butt joint and screw yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd probably get away with glue, mate. You don't need to use the screw as well, do you? Might, might as well. Yeah, and uh, of course... Why not the... just go with a six-inch fucking nail? <laughs> That's a problem. The, the concrete is not uh, expanding at the same rate as the wood. <laughs> so, of course, it hasn't any direction to go that way. So the only way will be to actually break up the joint... Um, but then again, uh, of course, um, maybe I don't have the meat at the corners. Maybe I'll have just concrete corners. I can cast, uh, <laughs> yeah. Or maybe I don't use wood at all. That would be, that would be the yeah. cheapest and easiest actually. But now I cut it up, so I can't return it. So, if expansion's an issue, we we'll just go back to that rubber thing and put rubber corners on it. <laughs> <laughs> A rubber concrete table. <laughs> Oh, I saw. I thought you said rubber, not river. <laughs> <laughs> the disappointment on your client's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a huge dildo table. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You said about having a, a hole in the centre of the table earlier, KJ, which is no good. I think you've missed a trick there. You could literally put the kitchen bin underneath that hole all the waste can just be scraped straight off the table. All the crumbs just wiped into it. Yeah. I mean, with kids, that's brilliant because yeah. you can just shove everything down that crack in the middle and then you have a garbage disposal and a bin there. So. <laughs> yeah. You would be fishing out a lot of forks and glasses and Lego pieces and that sort of thing. Though. 
I mean, that's just a bonus solution. I mean, that's just decluttering, so, isn't it? <laughs> I'm so tired of asking for like, can you pick this up? Can you pick this up? So if it's something there when I'm uh, vacuuming, that's like, nope. Foom, 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 foom. <laughs> and they have so much crap and all the accessories for the dolls, like miniature <laughs> everything. They don't even know it's missing. They don't know where it is half the time. So if I hear a sound in the vacuum, it's like I- I'm not even bothering to open it up. I mean, it's uh, it's not like we have any fancy jewelry <laughs> just laying around all willy nilly. So that's probably nothing expensive. <laughs> You know that it's not your stuff, at least. Yeah. <laughs> when you vacuum vacuum the the workshop instead, <laughs> oh no, I lost oh, the yeah. screw. Needed to get out. What is that? Spending two hours going through the <laughs> the dust bin to just what was that? Was that the one screw I lost? Yeah. <laughs> um. yeah one th- one thing I've done this week was I premiered the table saw. I actually used it for something. Nice. Please tell me you used it to build table. <laughs> well, I I used it to make us. I think it's kind of like a table, uh, one of those IKEA box things, stool table thingies. I made ah, it a little bit lower, enough. so <laughs> so it actually worked as a as a sofa cushion. That's not what it's called, but you put your feet up. Uh, a poof. A poof, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or a footstool. <laughs> footstool, yeah. I like poof better. Yeah, poof. <laughs> yeah. So I made it. Uh, I made the poof shorter. <laughs> that sounded wrong in so many ways. <laughs> oh, Glenn is so pulling our legs again, isn't he? Yeah, it's yeah, but suspenders I, but just, all over again. <laughs> I'm leaning into it. I've decided to, yeah. to to embrace instead of poofs and suspenders. Yeah. <laughs> And knitting Ooh, that's a, as well. That's a name for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second the, channel. <laughs> I sent you the proper name for the knitting sticks as well yesterday. Yeah. Knitting racket. I haven't uh, ran the quality control of that, but um, I'll take <laughs> your word for it. Knitting racket. Isn't that the sound you when someone is knitting close to you? You just hear... Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> I mean that's that's kind of a nice. I mean you you could do that as a fall asleep sound on Spotify, I guess, and rack up a lot of listeners because that is kind of like a soothing sound to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I realized that my uh, my making career is uh, not uh, taking off in the knitting direction uh, anytime soon, but uh, <laughs> at least I got the. I got the sticks loaded and I uh, got three runs in, but uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> well, Michelle saw your post and she said, so the boys in it, they say, do you ever feel like doing any of this stuff? Like, no, nope. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> well, well, from, from uh, what uh, my wife is looking at in the knitting community of the three of us, you have the looks for, for the knitter guy because no hair and, uh, and a big beard, that's kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen uh, it's been popular in uh, uh, what's that community called the hipster community knitting was a thing and of course uh, I could I could hide in that community and pull off being one of them for a, a half an hour unless I have to speak <laughs> <laughs> uh, might do that put on my overalls and uh, a beanie and then uh, yeah you need to curl your moustache at the ends don't you to be a hipster yeah, I need to. I, ha- I have the uh, I have the accessories. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I'm kind of my uh, oldest daughter. She's um, oh, she wants uh, she, she loves watching videos on YouTube of people making dresses. And I've said, well, let's go to the shop that sells uh, whatever you need. Uh, we can uh, get a template, and uh, you can pick the fabric with whatever pattern you want and we'll make a dress it's going to be the worst dress ever but it's going to be a fun project and i'm actually looking forward to it so um nice. the problem mm-hmm. is of course you realize that once i start working people who actually know what they're doing they're going to say but for that you need 
this and you should have one of those and then something is going to click in my brain Ooh, it's, <laughs> it's just a new section of tools that just opened <laughs> up before me yeah. i mean it's like uh it's small hammers scissors uh, accessories to the sewing machine and then <laughs> yeah yeah that's a rabbit hole in itself actually the, the scissors um thing for sewing that's that's quite a nice thing to go down i bought michelle a really nice pair of um, tailoring scissors a couple of christmases ago and they are just the most beautiful things to use if i was allowed to use them they would be anyway <laughs> <laughs> but they're the sort of things you buy and they you know they, they would be handed down through generations and then she got um, a, a matching pair of the little snips as well to go with it but they're just yeah. lovely they're some really, really good ones yeah really yeah you quality. keep yours you keep your scissors close to your heart and don't lend them out. <laughs> when, I, when, I was, <laughs> when I was in the student theater, I, I was in the costume department one year. Then I had my own sister and I had another sister that I was the one that I landed out. So I all <laughs> went around with two scissors. But okay, you want to borrow one? Here, you can take this one. <laughs> You're not touching the other one. Hey. It's kind of a bummer with uh, trying to buy fabric nowadays around here because since since COVID, like most all of the proper fabric stores close by have closed down because no one was going there and everyone's buying stuff online. So it's and I don't like buying fabric online because I I don't really know what things are called. So I want to touch and feel it. Right. To be able to, to know what it is that I'm, I'm after. We actually have a chain in Norway that sells fabric and all, all, all that you need. And it's it's very popular. So they haven't been close to bankruptcy ever, I think. And there is one close by. So you can just go there and have a look. And they, they have people working there who actually knows stuff. It's, mm. it's what you want from a hardware store where you go and you ask someone uh, about how does this tool work? Is this the thing for me? I mean, you can go in there and you ask them anything about fabric. They know everything about every brand that they have, mm. sewing machines, every tool, whatnot. And mm. they're really helpful. So that's a, it's a brilliant store to just roam around then. Mm. Nice. It's funny, last, last weekend I wanted a glass cutter. You know, one of those things that you just, you want it and you want it now. Yeah. So I went to um, town and there was at least three shops that sold fabric, but I could not get a glass cutter in town. I told one off Amazon in the end. <laughs> and that was looking around two big DIY stores and a few little ones as well. Yeah, well, we could have popped by for a cup of coffee. You can have uh, borrowed mine. <laughs> I have, I have one somewhere uh, that uh, was handed down, probably my grandfather's. Actually, you mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. I was tempted just to nip round just to see if I could borrow it, but uh, yeah, yeah, the Amazon option seemed a little quicker. <laughs> <laughs> maybe even cheaper in the end, but yeah, oh, maybe. <laughs> but that's nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a. I'm actually down that rabbit hole myself because I'm. I've seen these ergonomic scissors uh, that has a, a different kind of grip and it's also spring loaded. So it actually opens by itself because I really wanted it again when I did the cardboard templates for the knife along because it's your hand doesn't get in the way. So it's much easier to like cut uh, shapes uh, out of cardboard. So uh, but they are quite expensive, but they are decent scissors. So of course they they are going to be in a special draw <laughs> with uh, the <laughs> lock on it, so the kids don't. Uh, oh, this one we can use to uh, cut stones and grass in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a scissors with springs in them. I mean, are you, are you sure you're not getting it confused with gardening secateurs? Or <laughs> they are actually the same thing. <laughs> um, except when they are for uh, fabric and uh, clothes making, then of course they are three times the price. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they are, they are very similar. But 
a bit finer, not so uh, rudimentary, or what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, the tolerances are pretty damn good on those high-end fabric scissors. So the reason I needed the glass cutter is I got a little distracted at the weekend off the um, four string and um, <laughs> got distracted with another You need one. another name for it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little bit distracted from the mini guitar. Much better. <laughs> and um, <laughs> there was a, I saw a thing on YouTube. It was just making these really basic holograms, and I got a little bit fascinated with those. But you said so, guitar. Oh, okay. How many strings does it have? <laughs> 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 just add another string so we can get out of this. Yeah. <laughs> Two less than the usual. <laughs> <laughs> The same amount as a bass. Have I worded that okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got um, got distracted with this little um, hologram thing. So it's basically just holding glass at 45 degrees and you get these hologram videos, which looks like there's a jellyfish floating ah, in midair. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a, yeah, that took me away from the project. Most of uh, Saturday evening, I think. <laughs> Doesn't take a lot to distract me. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to distract myself this weekend by digging in the garden because it actually felt like spring. So then it started to. I, I felt it's a bit. Spring, <laughs> let's dig. <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> what well, did you dig, KJ? Well, it was, I mean, more or less, I was cleaning up all the stuff that I didn't clean up. Uh, when summer ended and all of the digging projects, uh, I tried to clean up the the pathway to the house because it was so overgrown that it wasn't anything you could do about it. So I just more or less dug it out, all of it. <laughs> so, but then I just dumped all the all the stuff that I dug out. Just hey, I'll take care of this later, and later never came. So oh. now it was later. So now I actually <laughs> took care of it and smoothed out uh, the hill. Uh, beside our driveway, so it actually looks kind of decent, at least. Uh, so that's that felt good. Uh, nice. To not have a pile of old grass and sticks and sand and leaves and all of yeah rubbish beside the car. But it felt it felt good go going out and actually getting a workout, and I think it was good for my back as well. It, don't, it doesn't feel as bad as it did a couple of weeks ago. So well, that's yeah. good. You've exercised and you're good. I managed to watch half your video today. Um, <laughs> and Thanks. I it's, really... it's, it's such a long drag, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was in a car on the way home, so it's hard to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Two red lights, that was yeah. it. <laughs> no, but I, I really got that summer feeling uh, when you just go outside to do things. Uh, and of course... Um, I have a couple of things just waiting in the pipeline in the workshop for me to be able to just open the the entire workshop and wo work outside. And today was maybe the first day I saw that that is going to happen soon. So uh, I spent the day today not digging as much holes, but I was uh, digging cat litter and throwing that away. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still I'm still not done, so it, it's uh, it's more than a one day venture. So I I can't really fathom how much crap that cat can produce <laughs> over a winter. But uh, yeah, <laughs> diffusing well, actually, the minefield. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> Jack the kitten's not allowed out yet, so he's using a litter tray. Oh, and yeah. Judging how much he uses that each day, a whole one grown up cat over the whole of winter. I mean. I'm surprised you can even get out of the doorway. I'm even surprised you can get it out of her. I mean, they are huge. <laughs> and it's like, God damn it. It's a, it's a small, medium-sized cat, but she craps like a... Yeah, um, I'm not going to say anything, but yeah. <laughs> That's the realization you get when you have kids. <laughs> See, how can that little tiny person <laughs> make dumps bigger than I do? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> We've all had that realisation as well. <laughs> it's so true. 
I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> but yeah, all about being a parent. Yep. <laughs> it kind of normalizes certain aspects of uh, <laughs> biology <laughs> for a period of time. Yeah. yeah. For good or worse. It's grounding. I, I had a thought uh, the other day. I listened to a podcast and they they asked uh, for listeners to, to recommend the podcast to other people. And that's not really something we've been talked about. And then I realized that I really could use some maker pod recommendations myself because I'm at the moment I'm scraping the bottle of the podcast barrel several times a week. Oh, yeah. I was uh, kind of thinking that you were going to. Uh like suggest people other podcasts. And then I was thinking, I mean, if they're already here, why should they go anywhere else for anything? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <because> for <laughs> you. I, hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was thinking uh, if we should uh, try to coax our listeners to, to make some kind of maker pod recommendations on social media top one, top five, top seven, top hundred, whatever the number is, so we can get on it. Uh, just to, to spread, I mean, spread the word of good things to listen to. Because, Or if you don't feel like it, just send me some, some good Maker Podcast uh, suggestions. Because no, no, I no. Feel like S- I need send to... them to us. I have, <laughs> I have a list of three podcasts that I'm listening to. So I'm opening to expanding that list. Yeah. And... Uh... I mean, I've heard a lot of podcasts, but there, as far as I know, there are three out there worth listening to. I'm not going to mention which ones those are, but uh, <laughs> of course, that list uh, should be longer. So uh, hit us up with some suggestions. It was interesting earlier on, KJ, you said, you said uh, cautionary tales with regards to something else. And it reminded me that was a podcast I used to listen to. So yeah. I wrote it down as soon as you said, <laughs> I must, must get that back on the podcast player. I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so easy, we, especially if you switch podcast players or something like that, to just forget about, about good ones you listen to. And I mean, there's a lot of podcasts out there, but you have to find the gems in all the manure. It's, it <laughs> can be really hard, I feel. That's the other thing. If people are going to suggest podcasts and, of course, suggest players as well, I've... Of course, I pay for the the family package on Spotify, but it's starting to get crappy. Of course, a lot of the the podcasts and shows now have adverts. I mean, I paid for Spotify just to not having to listen to that, but now it's creeping up on us anyway. And they are now so heavily influenced that the algorithm for Spotify and also where you are located just suggests Norwegian content. I'm not interested in Norwegian comedy yeah. podcast because mm. not to offend anyone, but compared to like a British comedy or something, we are scraping the bottom of the barrel. It's not worth listening to. And Spotify will only suggest that. So if I'm going to listen to, a British podcast, I need to know what it is called specifically and actually search for it. So, And all the music they recommend to me is based on what I like to listen to. And it's like, it's the same music all over again. Yeah, but that's yeah. the thing I've already listened to. I, You have the fucking library of Alexandria for music. I want a random function that doesn't follow the algorithm or any genre or anything. Just give me a random file of audio. And then, of course, if I like it, then I listen to it. If not, I play, uh, click next. I don't need them to suggest. I'm thinking the last couple of weeks, I was thinking about terminating that account because it doesn't give me anything that it gave me before. So if someone has a better player out there, please let me know. I'm actually mortified because i thought norway was the hot place for comedy i I thought it was quite the accolade to be 121 on the uh comedy (laughs) podcast list now you're telling me that's not that's not good (laughs) (laughs) well uh 
There's only 110 spots. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we are number 121. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I can't believe it. <laughs> no, we have... Uh... We have some bright stars on a, a dim night sky, but it's just very little creativity. I mean, it's uh, mm-hmm. at least on television shows and anything, they, they take something that uh, has been running for years on British television and they make a Norwegian much worse version of it. And <laughs> we don't have enough comedians uh, going around for several seasons of uh, a concept like uh, would i lie to you so of course the first season they used the 10 comedians that we have the second season uh, and uh, b and c celebrities that are half decently funny without trying to be and then they start with politicians and other people who have stumbled over uh, in front of a tv camera the last 20 years and they have writers writing very poorly and you can actually see the people like they are reading the text that are in front of them and reading out loud. So they haven't even had time or been capable of memorizing the jokes in forehand. So I don't need to watch a television show uh, looking at four unknown adults reading like it's a clue like a a fourth grade recital of homework or something. I mean, it's (laughs) ludicrously bad. And uh, the thing I'm talking about now, it's the most popular TV show in Norway. So imagine uh, everything else is even worse than that. (laughs) So uh, it's really crap. Yeah. It's really fun with the uh, podcast players. I use Pocket Cast and downloads all the episodes. And then you... They, they download commercials as well when you do that, so they know to play them. Uh, b- but when you're in another country, they download the commercials for that country instead. Yeah. So what did you, you get... call it? Pod? Uh, pocket cost. Oh, yeah. I just need to write it down here on uh, notes so I can <laughs> throw it in the oven and swear never to use it. Pocket cost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, I like adverts. I can't wait for somebody to sponsor us and... Uh... <laughs> so we can <laughs> I mean, if it's if it's good adverts, I mean, if it's to- tolerable adverts, it's fine. But like half of them is just ads for other podcasts that I'm not interested in. Because I saw... as you say, Hova, they, they they just oh, he listened to this Swedish podcast, then he probably like this and this and this. But no, I don't. Why don't you look at all the other things I, I listen to? It should be a pretty common thread there, but they, I mean, I'm I'm really I'm disappointed in AI more or less. Do you listen to any Swedish podcast, KJ? Just out of interest. Yeah, a couple. Yeah. What are they about? Well, there's just one maker podcast, and then okay. there's uh, uh, a couple of pop culture ones yeah and some science so i mean that's that's more or less my my uh, uh, my pod uh, is either uh, swedish english or australian or some american maker uh, comedy or science very good no murder no murder no, no not into I that do, i do quite a bit of murder <laughs> of course you work in the garden we're, working snip, in a garden snip, with snip. shovels all day so yeah, yeah we kind of figured that a long time ago but <laughs> he, he's you're, just you're funny so it's okay <laughs> <laughs> and there's a sea bes- between us so, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, so far it's just cosplaying a serial killer but yeah. one of these days so, he's gonna turn the transition so looking forward to may <laughs> <laughs> You're going to show us around the countryside and show us where yeah. Jimmy Hoffa is buried. And... <laughs> show, you, show you one of the bigger gardens I do. Yeah. Plenty of plots in. I mean, space in that garden. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to be alone on, on Tuesday. So if it's, as long as he's not trying to find replacements for us, I think we're safe. <laughs> 
Yeah. I've been um, just changing the subject slightly. I um, I've been using the hashtag Lincoln Shirt Maker on um, some of my Instagram posts, and you know when you put hashtag and search it, it um, it comes up with other Lincoln Shirt Makers, and then I got a follow from a group on Instagram called Lincoln Shirt Makers. Oh, yesterday, nice. which was yeah, that's what I thought. It was over, and you can only join if you're from Lincolnshire on the on their Facebook group as well. And uh, but there's over four and a half thousand makers on it. But, okay. That being said, <laughs> I, I'm so glad you said that because I actually thought about that the other day. I mean, do people use hashtags? Um, because I was sitting and uh, like punching in a few of them, and of course they indicate how many posts are using that hashtag, but I think in the last 10 years, I might have searched three hashtags altogether. And <laughs> the, the few times I have, of course, they, 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 they don't show you what you're looking for, basically, unless you have yeah. a very narrow hashtag as well. So I was kind of thinking, why do I even bother? I mean, do the algorithm do something with it to show it to right people? Because I haven't clicked on anything to tell them what I'm interested in, because then they will only show me that, of course, and I'm interested yeah. in seeing a lot of other things. And it started thinking about, do people actually use them to search for, or do you even want to put it in there because you're putting yourself in a box, which is very convenient for the algorithm? I don't know. I'm basically lazy, so I don't want to do all that writing. I just want to upload and be done with it. So that's uh... it is a pain on Instagram. It's actually quite easy to do the um, add the hashtags when you do a short on YouTube because you start typing and they well, if ones you've used before just pop up automatically, so you can just reuse those and just add a few extras. As opposed to every time on Instagram, you have to type the whole lot out, don't you? Yeah. I, th I think it was in my early, um, I had a different uh, cartoon account on uh, Instagram. And of course, then I used the same hashtag. So I had like a text file with all the hash uh, tags stored. So uh, every time I posted a picture, it's just copy paste like uh, 50 hashtags and that's it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's one way idea. to do it. No, I, I, I basically use hashtags on Instagram for for comedy purposes. Uh, yeah. I just write stuff because it's I think it's funny, something that makes me giggle and just do <laughs> impossibly long ones. And if you see someone has done something this stupid before, then that's really <laughs> funny. And and I, 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 I tend to do a lot of the makers gonna and just add yeah makers yeah. gonna do stupid stuff and steal a car or something <laughs> like that or... I, I i've done that a couple of times as well and like a hashtag fuck me and then i got all these dms of uh, like uh... <laughs> <laughs> i only do it on um, the podcast instagram actually do the silly ones <laughs> <laughs> so when when i got the when we got the gifts at Christmas, KJ, I got mine first and posted about it first, and I put hashtag Havard's favourite on the bottom. <laughs> 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 and I think I did one about Tim recently as well, but I can't quite remember what that was now. <laughs> uh, Not many people read through them, do they? <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's just... If you can make yourself giggle, at least, it's, it's yeah, something. it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Speaking of gifts, I have to mention the the nice on air sign I, that actually arrived from Glenn the other week, and it's it's really nice when I see the video of of his on air sign, and then I just <laughs> look at the sign, and then I have one that's more or less the same size because this is so far away from the camera. <laughs> that's exactly why you got a smaller one, KJ. Yeah, so it feels like we're we're in the same same situation. It's nice. It's nice. God, that was such a surprise when it arrived. And a nice surprise as well, for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> if only we can, could know where, it, where it's been. Has it so, been all around the world or just uh, laying <laughs> in a shed somewhere? Or 
But there is something. I mean, is is it a is it a town called Sweden in Guatemala or something that gets half <laughs> of the mail for Sweden before it like oh this is it going to the like other it. place? Yeah. Oh Jesus! Five weeks is ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When I looked up Royal Mail service after it didn't arrive after a week, it said um, three to five days, but please allow an extra thirty days for. Not quite in proportion to what you would expect, but yeah. (laughs) It's five centimeters, plus or minus one meter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's it's all gone to shit with the postal service, I feel like. And that is... uh, I actually wrote a love letter to the postal service. I mean, not to them, but about (laughs) them. It was like a more comedical (laughs) anecdote, but I mean, a few years ago, they they started delivering the mail every other day instead of every day, of course, because people don't send letters anymore and uh, packages are just as much dealt with by private companies. So, of course, they don't have as much to do anymore. And I think it's a bad thing. I mean, I like the Norwegian postal service and I mean, sen- sending letters is not slow. I mean... Of course, I can send a letter and it could be in Montana in two weeks and it will cost me two quids. I mean, if my father were to send that same letter, I mean, the the postman would use a week to take it to the nearest city um, where they would put it on a boat where it would go to Manchester and then it would take three or four days to get to Liverpool. And then you have the America line take it, I mean, three, four weeks before it's in the States. And then it's one of the two rail lines i don't remember the name west pacific east yeah something um and then of course a a local postman in the the mountains of montana would use a week on horseback to get it delivered so i mean you could end up spending two months before the letter arrived and i mean try keeping a hard on for that long while you're sexting with someone (laughs) i mean (laughs) so i don't think the postal service is that slow so yeah (laughs) yeah what was that i read or no my wife read it in the papers i think that the swedish postal service was actually proposing to have a worse delivery schedule than they had in the 17th century because then it was like uh, uh, an, a letter should go between Stockholm and Gothenburg in three days. Otherwise, there would be a fine for the postman or something like that. And I was, oh, five, five days delivery. That's that's okay, I think, now. So it's <laughs> we've gone back a couple of centuries when it comes to Jesus. delivering. But I mean, back in those days, I think you had like the postman come around three times a day or something like that. So yeah. you can actually get a letter and then send it off and get one back. On the same day, because that, then you didn't have modern technology. That is, that's the same with the, the railway service in Norway. Um, of course, we have one line going directly to Stockholm. And the Swedish railway company, or whatever they're called, uh, they agreed to upgrading that line. But of course, then the Norwegian company would have to do the same on our side of the border. But no, we didn't do that because we are incompetent with everything that got to do with trains. So, of course, now it takes even longer uh, than it did 30 years ago to take the train to Stockholm. And I think it was a journalist for a major newspaper. He started digging around and it turns around that all the railway lines in Norway were faster right after the war. And it just got worse. Of course, the the trains become more comfortable and more powerful. But of course, the lines are not keeping up and they can't drive them so fast on so bad infrastructure. So uh, actually, all the train lines is like 5, 10, half an hour slower than they were like uh, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And that's, yeah, that's crazy. They actually, they actually want us. It's actually cheaper to take an airplane between all the major cities in Norway than it is to take a train. Although the train would be faster because you don't have to go an hour early to the train station uh, and to be 
patted down by an overly eager uh, security guard. Uh, and then you have to fly and then land and do the same thing in the other end. But still, it's crappy. And I think when I'm going home to visit my mother, it's maybe four times as cheap to take uh, the airplane than to take the train. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but that's, that's where true. we are. Do you think the airlines have got it wrong then in trying to um, draw you in? Do you think they just need sexy guards to pat you down and everybody will be rushing there? I, I wish I could say it, it helped, but I'm, I'm a I'm a 40-year-old grumpy man. It doesn't do <laughs> You can be as sexy as you want. I don't want you patting me down. You just leave me alone. <laughs> the only thing I want in life is to sleep for three hours consecutively. So like, just lay off me. <laughs> and that's the same thing. I mean, all right. I've been standing there in queue and uh, like getting harassed and bullied and touched in places I would rather not be touched. And then you get onto the plane. Okay, at least now I can sleep for an hour. Fuck no. I mean, as quick as you fall asleep, then they start tapping you on the shoulder. Do you want coffee or tea? Of course, <laughs> I could murder someone, but then, of course, they would just return the flight and I wouldn't get anywhere, so I have to constrain myself. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've never sleeping on an airplane. They're too uncomfortable. And I can't imagine KJ finds it any better than I do. Oh, I've never been on a long flight where that was an option, so... But I don't think I would be able to know. No. Oh, that was beautiful. I uh, I flew back from Canada, and of course, I was sitting in a three seater, and the two seats next to me were not occupied, but the rest of the seats in the plane were. So it was stacked with people, but I was sitting and having an entire row, and of course. <laughs> This was an overnight flight, so every passenger got one crappy little pillow and a blanket. But, of course, I had three. And, <laughs> of course, I, I like turned up the armrests between the seats. So I could actually lay flat out sleeping for eight, nine hours. And, I mean, I could lay more flat than the people in, like, the first class. And... <laughs> After a few hours, people start to get restless. I mean, the back is aching a bit and they start walking up and down the aisle and, of course, uh, having to tiptoe around the people standing in queue to use the toilet. And all those hateful blick, the, the looks that I got from just lying there like a king <laughs> in my bed. I mean, that was worth it. That was a brilliant flight. <laughs> nice. Apparently, New Zealand Airlines has that that you can book three seats and then you get like a little extension thing so it actually turns into a bed that's too short for a normal person but uh yeah so then you can <laughs> you can get, a, get some pillows and blankets and just and, and do that because that's what you're supposed to do it's probably still cheaper than going first class as well isn't it booking three yeah. seats yeah. Yeah. yeah most likely <laughs> but you don't get the wine and the champagne and uh, the hot towels slapped on your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. I don't see the, I mean, <laughs> I mean, why do you want to get slapped in the face with those hot vet towels? I mean, we're not in prison. I'm trying to sleep on an airplane. <laughs> God damn it. Just let me be. I haven't tried it, but I can't really see the appeal. No. All right. Then uh, that's your task for the next episode. You try that and tell us how it went. <laughs> <laughs> it it almost seems about like your flight to Canada was the last time you slept properly. <laughs> God damn, it just feels like it. Ever, yeah, just yeah. been bitter ever since. <laughs> um, I, I've been an old bitter man since puberty, but I mean, this <laughs> sleep deprivation, deprivation on top of that, it doesn't help, no. No. <laughs> I mean, we had, I think it was the 29th, we actually had uh, the the night to ourselves. Um, my wife's aunt took the kids for the night and we went out for uh, dinner. And of course, we, we had the possibility to just have a conversation, the two of us. Uh, of course, uh, we came home after the dinner and then I passed out on the couch my wife passed out in the bed uh, with the ipad and some show and then 
I think 11 o'clock in the night, we both just woke up and, all right, time to go to bed. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but at, at least we got sleep. But, I mean, one night, that's just a tease, isn't it? It's just, you, you, you could have had this, but you don't. So now it's back again to uh, being uh, woken up at uh, every hour of the night. And, uh, yeah, it's a nightmare at uh, this point. But I, I know it's going to pass. I mean, we had the same thing when our oldest were around three years. It's a period, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and on that happy note, we end today's episode. So, Hovar, can you get some sleep? <laughs> Have a nice Woo! night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>